Somebody should invent mufflers for motorcycles. I'm sorry, buddy. Did I wake you up? No, no. It's okay. Were you out all night? Yeah, taking pictures at nights like eating peanuts. It's what you find to take pictures of. Everything. Buildings, beaches. Nighttime makes everything so photogenic. I wound up at this truck stop up Pacific Coast Highway. Terrific place. So you're going to develop them before you get some sleep? I just want to develop this one role. I want to see something. I'll see you later, Peaches. Go to bed. Who are you talking to? Willie. He was out on that taking pictures. Does he work for a newspaper now? No. He does it once in a while on his own time. Hmm. Speaking of newspapers, I'm going to get kicked off the school newspaper if I don't come up with a story soon. Well, you get around. You ought to be able to think of something. Yeah, but I want something hot. Oh, well. I guess you'd get in trouble if you wrote about what happened to Wendy Spears the other day in history. What happened? Didn't you hear? She got caught cheating on a test. And? Miss Kennedy took her and Jessica Layton out into the hall, took their papers away, and wouldn't even let them finish the test. Well, that always means cheating. What else happened? Nothing. She got off. Because yesterday she was at the Honor Society meeting. Still a member. Class President Gets Off Easy by Buddy Lawrence. Sam Trask. I never thought you'd come back. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Is it right if I uh -huh. leave my sleeping bag here, Mrs. Lawrence? I don't want to lug it to my piano yeah. lesson. Of course, Audrey. Okay. Thank you. See you then. Charlie Roberts is coming over this afternoon to pick up the story. And if it's okay, it'll be in Monday's paper. It's Saturday, though, and you haven't even written it. Who's Charlie Roberts? Editor of the school paper. 
Did you tell him what it was about? No, just that it's hot. Hang it up, buddy. Hello. Willie, it's Sammy. Willie? Hello, Sam. I thought I saw you last night. I wasn't sure if you had. What are you doing back here? I need your help. I don't know if I can help you, Sam. Look, I don't want to ask you, Willie. I know how you feel, but I've got no choice. I need you to drive me someplace. Not a chance. I shouldn't even be talking to you. Look, it's no big deal. It won't take that long. You know, I am the last person you should be calling for help. I thought maybe we could let bygones be... Our friendship went out with the last bygone, and that was your choice, not mine. Look, I can't show myself, Willie. Do you know where I'll be? I don't want to know. Sure you do, partner. I'll be at the old... I'm sorry, Sam. Goodbye. Save some of that for me. I'm famished. Peanut butter? Not that famished. Hi. Okay. Ooh. That looks good. Peanut butter? Yummy. Takes all kinds. Okay, now call the hospital. Al has not permitted visitors except for his immediate family. Is that serious? Well, they wouldn't give me any details on the phone, but it's his second heart attack. He's not allowed visitors. Poor Al. I don't think he has immediate family around here anymore. Who are you talking about? Al Trask, Sam's father. I wonder if Sam knows about Al. I don't think it would make any difference to him if he did. Doug. He didn't even come home for his mother's funeral. Well, it was awfully sudden. He might not have known. Have you heard from him, Willie? What's he, down in Mexico still? Yeah, I think so. I guess so. I, mean, I don't know. I have to go. Hold it right there, partner. Drop your gun real slow. Now, I didn't come here to play cowboy, Sam. Real slow, like nice and easy. Knock it off. Drop it! For God's sake. Drop your gun and put your hands up. Yahoo! Oh. <laughs> Good to see you, Willie. I guess we better
better take cover, partner, before the sheriff uh, or the watchman comes along and throws us into the pokey. Hey, it's crazy, you know? Other kids used to sneak into movies on Saturdays. We used to sneak into the place where the movies were made. Listen, I'm sorry about your father, Sam. Is that why you came? Well, before I knew he was in the hospital, I wasn't gonna come. After I found out, here I am. So I guess that's why. Thanks. Hey, you know, if we get busted here, it won't be the first time. You remember that time? Well, I remember all right, and you made sure we got busted that time, and I'm sure you, you're gonna get us busted this time. Last night was because you had us using the studio sound equipment to act out our gunfights. <laughs> oh, is my old man mad? Well, who wouldn't have been? Man, every damn bit of trouble I got into as a kid was because of you, and now here I am all over again. Hey, lighten up, Willie boy. You must have wanted to be led because you followed. Well, maybe then, but not anymore. I don't even want to be here now. Harboring a fugitive. That, uh, offend your moral code or something? What offends my moral code is exactly what offended it when you got yourself into this mess. The way you used me to put your plan into action, and then once I did nothing. It was like you and I didn't even know each other. So what did you want me to do? Cut you into the action? Now, don't tell me you wanted to be an accomplice. No, I didn't, and I wouldn't have been. So what are you complaining about? You didn't want to be involved, and you weren't. Not involved? I'm the guy you used to set up your victim. You came to me and said, hey, that Linda Beecham is really cool. How about arranging something? And don't think the police didn't find out about that either. I didn't know they did. Well, they did, and the FBI, and they didn't let up on me for the entire time that she was gone. Now, Bing, you turn up after three years right out of the blue, and you want to pick up just where we left off, playing cowboys and Indians here? I don't want to play. Now, if there's something I can do for you about your father... Help me get to see him. How is it you can manage to get all the way from Mexico to here, but you can't manage the five miles from here to the hospital? They're going to be watching for me. That's right, watching for you. What can I do? Just get me there. Buddy, th this is good, but, but, well, it's very strong stuff. Didn't you get any different interpretations of what happened? I'm sure everyone saw the same thing. Okay, but try to find one person who might have seen it differently. Also, I think you ought to call Wendy Spears and ask her directly what happened. She can only deny it, the cheating. Well, that'll become part of your story. Miss Spears denies all allegations. I'll stop by here on my way to the printers. Don't worry, you won't be disappointed. Dr. Ridgeway, call your answering service. Dr. Ridgeway, call your answering service. I didn't see anybody, but the receptionist did ask me if I was an immediate member of the family. I knew it! They're waiting for me! I told you! We hold on a minute! She only asked because he's not allowed any other visitors. Come on. Let's go in. Come on. You must be in bad shape.
dead. No, he isn't. Doris, what happened? What happened to him? Are you a member of the immediate family? Doctor? Excuse me, what happened to him? Cardiac arrest. We resuscitated. Well, then he's all right. He's alive. Where are you taking him now? Intensive care. Thank you. Dr. Litchfield, call extension 1626. Dr. Litchfield, He'll be okay. He'll be okay. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Come on. see me. They won't. They never come in here. Nancy won't be back until Monday. Get some sleep. Tomorrow morning we'll go to the hospital. Hey, uh, Willie, I, uh, I want to thank you for everything. Shut up, shut up. Good night, Sam. about you. You've been gone all day. I just went to see a movie. Have you had your dinner? Yes. Excuse me, I'm really bushed. I haven't caught up yet from last night. Good night, Willie. Good night. Very well written, buddy. Are you sure it's accurate? Sure, I'm sure. Audrey and Robin were there. I checked with other kids, too. My first... What's that name on your story? Byline. Byline, right. I don't know, buddy. This is more in the nature of an accusation than a report. It's very damaging to your classmate. Well, it's investigative reporting. I'm concerned, buddy. Shouldn't you check your facts with Miss Kendall? No way. The class president who's getting off easy got off easy because Miss Kenderly let her. She's part of the whole cover-up. Well, I don't want to interfere, buddy. But things aren't always as they appear to be. What uh, happened during the test might have looked like an incident of cheating, but it didn't have to be. What else could it have been? Answering that question is part of a responsible journalist's job, it seems to me. I'm responsible. <laughs> Good morning, Willie. Hi. I overslept. Where's he running to? He overslept. For what? It's Sunday. Maybe he doesn't know that. Maybe.
Sam. Go home, Willie. What? I said go home. Tell me why you didn't stay in the guest house. Look, I, I figured you were right. I figured you just didn't need any more of this hassle. I thought if I went to the hospital early enough that uh, it'd be cool, but there was a cop outside. I know that. I went there first. Look, just go home, Willie. Go back to your nice, safe house where everything is warm and calm and everybody talks civilly to everybody else. I can handle this myself. Right, just the way you handle everything else, man. What the hell with you? Look, I appreciate what you've done. You don't appreciate anything. You don't even know what the word means. You think you can just come in here and get me involved up to my ears in your mess? Then tell me to walk home? Treat me like some stray mutt following you around? Okay, do it alone, man. I have had it with you. Willie. Willie! I can't. I can't do it alone. didn't get anything from Wendy Spears. I couldn't. Buddy, you have to get a statement from her. Well, we'll miss tomorrow's paper. Then we'll print it next week. It won't be news anymore. It'll be old. Buddy, this story has to do with the president and the class. I mean, part of the story is what Wendy says about the allegations. How can you ask a person questions like that? Is it true that you weren't cheating? How come it got covered up? Look, if you're a reporter, you ask. That's what they asked the other president. Who, Michael Hollybird? Richard Nixon. Hello? Hello, is this Wendy Spears? Yes, who's this? Letitia Lawrence, buddy. Oh, hi, buddy. Hi. Um, Wendy, I'm writing an article for the school paper, and it has to go to the printers, and I need a statement from you. Oh, sure. About what happened during the history test in Miss Kinderley's class? Buddy, I don't think you should write a story about that. Why? Everybody who saw what happened wants to know why you got off so easy. When I got off, listen, buddy, I didn't cheat on that test, and you better not write the story. Hey, you can't get off just because you're class president, you know. Don't debate with her. Just get her statement. You write the story. And you're going to cause a lot of pain, buddy. So then your statement is that you deny the charges. My statement is I have no statement. Don't do this, buddy, please. Okay, then you have no statement. Bye. She sounds panicked. She wouldn't be so scared if it weren't true, right? <laughs> I'll add the no statement line. Spot me for sure. Not if we take off that mustache and cut your hair. Gotta figure out a way to get into that hospital. He'll just clean you up. This isn't gonna work. Let's give it a try, huh? Clean up your act, Sam. Whew. Literally. Well, it really freaks me out being back here. This neighborhood hasn't changed at all. All these waspy white faces. Everybody insulated in their big houses. They don't have the first clue to what's going on in the world. You sound over-rehearsed, Sam. At least three, four years ago, you had a little passion in your voice. Yeah, what's it sound like now? Rhetoric. You really want to come back, don't you? I don't want to go to prison. Maybe you could make a deal. Talk to a lawyer. Say you've reformed. I haven't reformed. My politics are the same. But you would like to come home. You would like a nice, safe house among friends. Why don't you? What? Nothing. Nothing.
cup of tea. This would sound better. I'm sure that will solve everything. Doug, did you finish that Chinese red tea? I think Nancy has it. Oh, of course. I'll go get it. I'll have a cup, too. Okay. As a matter of fact, the neighborhood has changed. Yeah, and about time. That's what's so crazy about you. you. Keep yelling for change. When you get it, you complain. Yeah, because not enough changes. You know who you remind me of? Jay? Oh, okay, I'll settle for Tom Payne. Your father. Yeah. Do you remember how much trouble you had in Woodshop? How you had to start ten pair of bookends before you got the knack? <laughs> you took the finished ones home, and your father said, beautiful. Two bookends for the price of 20. Yeah, but he was always that way. Like when uh, my mom would get all dressed up, and he'd demand to know why she didn't look that terrific all the time. But I'm not like him. Doug, Sam Trask is in the guest house with Willie. Do they know you saw them? No. What are we going to do, Doug? I don't know. I'm not going to let them stand around while I think about it. Hi. Excuse me. Just a minute, Willie. What's Sam Trask doing in the guest house? Oh. I was hoping you wouldn't find out. Honestly, Willie. He called me yesterday. He wanted to see his father. He needed help. I drove him to the hospital. They were taking his father into intensive care. Oh, Willie, I know he's been your friend for a long time, but we feel terrible about You're his You're in father. over your head. You've got to tell him to go. I can't. Aside from everything else, you put me in an untenable position. How so? I'm a lawyer, an officer of the court. I can't harbor a fugitive in my home. I'm sorry. If you'll just let me handle it, it'll be over soon. Willie, he's a wanted criminal. Why didn't you come to us before you get into this? Now, wait a second. First, you tell me I put you in an untenable position. Then you ask why I didn't come to you for permission. If I had, what would you have done? Mom? Willie, you have got to realize that by doing this, you have deliberately broken the law. Well, I didn't think about the law. And in case you're not sure, I think what Sam did stinks, but he came to me for help, and I felt I had to give it to him. Out of friendship. Friendship? Sam indirectly involved you in a kidnapping. He put you in danger, then dropped you. Do you call that friendship? Do you call coming back here, involving you again, involving us friendship? I wasn't talking about the kind of friend Sam is, but what kind I am. I didn't mean to involve anyone but myself. I am sorry it happened the way it did. But I don't know how to be any other kind of friend. Sam's father's dying. And he asked me to help him see him. And I couldn't say no. Give it to Sam. I think you better wait till your father comes back. Where did he go? To the guest house. He'll need a clean shirt, too.
Hello, Mr. Lawrence. Hello, Sam. You can finish shaving, then you better leave. I know, I know. I caused Willie trouble, and I'm sorry. You shouldn't have called him. Willie's risking a great deal by helping you. Look, I said I'm sorry. Not good enough. What are you going to do? Just stand there and make sure I get out? Or uh, do you want to be sure that I don't cause Willie Boy any more trouble than I have? You haven't changed at all, have you? No, I haven't. Why should I? Nothing else has. Nothing and nobody. I don't agree with you. I think some of us have. I never liked the way you did things. Even before you became politically involved, you were always so combative. Always Sam Track versus the world. I happen to believe in what I'm doing. I don't doubt that. I never questioned your sincerity, merely your methods, your unscrupulousness, the way you implicated Willie. Willie and I have been through this already. You always had such potential. Even when you were getting all the other kids into trouble, even then. There's no doubt who is the leader. Yeah, and as far as you're concerned, my potential's run amok. Yep. I'm afraid it has. But it's still there, intact. Why didn't you get me to help you instead of Willie? <laughs> oh, terrific. Corporate lawyer defends hippie radical. I could have got you another one, a good one. Things aren't going to get any easier for you, Sam. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Give yourself a chance. You're a bright boy. Oh, knock you... it off, Mr. Lawrence. Knock it off and leave me alone. Oh, you haven't changed. All right, I'll leave you alone. But when Willie gets back, I want you to get dressed and leave. Mr. Lawrence, until I see my father, don't call the cops. Good luck. <laughs> tell your old man, didn't you? I didn't tell him. Yeah, well, then how did he... Never mind. Doesn't matter. Does anything... Does anything what? Does anything matter to you? Yeah. My father matters to me. Not because he's sick and he may be gonna die, but because every day of my life that I can remember, I fought with him. From the day I was born until the day of the... to the last time I saw him. How come you won't say the word? Word? Kidnapping. We've talked about it a hundred times in the last two days, and you haven't said it once. I don't like the sound of it. Well, then you're right. Something does matter to you. Yeah. I want a time with my dad when we don't fight. I want it for me. Also, you matter. I can't stand it that I betrayed you. I hate it. Okay. But those are all things in the past. What matters to you now? Well, let's not talk about it anymore. I want to. It matters to me. No more. Too much has gone down. I just want to see my dad and get going. I'm sorry I got in touch with you. I'm sorry about everything. Don't go, man. I'll see you around, partner. If you know what's good for you, you ain't gonna be following me now.
Sam, get in the car. Come on, get in. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Lawrence? Yes? Is Buddy home? I'm Wendy Spears. Come in. Hi, Buddy. Hi. Come and sit down, Wendy. Look, I know I got excited on the phone this afternoon, but there's something I gotta explain to you. When Miss Kenderley took Jessica and me into the hall, it was to compare our papers. Jessica was copying from me But Jessica's an honor student. Yeah, I know, but she's had a lot of problems lately. Her grades have been slipping and, well, her folks got divorced. I don't think I want to hear anymore. Anyway, Miss Kendley knew how crummy Jessica had been feeling. Well, she dealt with her privately. How come you didn't finish the test? Miss Kendley gave me the test over again after school. She didn't want to humiliate Jessica in front of the whole class. And that's the whole story. And that's a true story. You can check with Miss Kenderley. Are you going to write it? Are you kidding? This is private stuff. Thanks, buddy. I'm sorry about today. I have a responsibility to explain myself, and I should have at the time. Goodbye, Mrs. Lawrence. Goodbye, Wendy. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy is right. Oh, Charlie. The paper's being printed right now. Hello, Charlie. Buddy, don't print the Wendy Spears story. I just found out she wasn't cheating. But I didn't find out... Charlie? Char what did Charlie say? What didn't he say? The paper's on the presses right now. You mean it's still going to come out? No. For the first time in the school's history, the paper's not going to come out. I'm fired. Now let's hear from you. If you insist. But why not just talk to yourself? see anyone out front. Yeah, well, he may be inside. Listen, Willie, uh, one more favor. Get out of here fast. What are you doing? Look, just go, Willie. I don't want you involved anymore. I want to thank you for... Uh... Just thanks. you do now? I don't know. It'll all work out, though, Bob. I'm glad you came back three years late. <laughs> if they take you to court, don't get mad, Sammy. The, the judge doesn't want lectures. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I always.
always told you. Clean cut. It's better than Harry. I think you'd better go. He needs the rest. Get well, Pop. school. Wonderful. What's new in the world of journalism today? Did you mean that to be funny? Yes, but it isn't. Mm. Well, you know I was fired. I was a witness. Today, when the advisor found out why the paper didn't come out, Charlie Roberts was fired. Oh. That seems a little harsh. Only when Wendy Spears went to the principal, who went to the advisor, and Wendy said she was responsible. Hmm. And then Wendy Spears was fired. Of course not. But Wendy got the principal and the advisor to reconsider. So Charlie Roberts wasn't fired. How about Buddy Lawrence? Charlie Roberts reconsidered, and Buddy Lawrence was unfired. You don't seem terribly pleased. Well, I'm off the investigative reporting for a while. I get more regular assignments. What's your first assignment? See, the biology club had too many members this year. So they make it into two clubs, a botany club and a zoology club. And? And that's it. Pretty dull, huh? Oh, I don't know. I'm curious to know why so many students are interested in biology, and how many joined the zoology club, and how many joined the botany club, and why. Aren't you? No. In the words of a great newspaper man, buddy, injustice is relatively easy to bear. It's justice that hurts.